God, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. And you know what? I just love the Lord, and I love what He is doing. And as you notice, they don't have the collar on me, so I will be moving around. You guys don't have to keep me in a place. You know I can't stay still. But you know what? I praise the Lord, and I'm just so thankful for what He's doing. And you know what, church? I listened this morning, and I had a wonderful sermon planned. But you know what? God has a better one. So I'm just going to go with what God has to say, and let's just go with it. Because what I heard today... You know, just really right and true in my heart, and it's exactly what's been on my heart this week. And I didn't know it until I listened to each and every one of you this morning. You know, but it's pouring out, it's pouring out in my heart. And you know what? That's where it always should be, is in your heart. And what I hear this morning, church, is I hear, I hear lost. And I hear love. And exactly, I think that's where the God is going to take us today. I think that's what we need to talk about. All right? Let's talk about the lost, shall we? God, Jesus talked to us, and he gave a wonderful parable of the lost. If you go to Luke chapter 15, and it is the parable of the lost sheep. And this just came to me, so what he says there is, Jesus said that he was gathered, gathered around where the sinners and the tax collectors and I kind of like that when I think about when he talks about the sinners and the tax collectors. I like the way he puts it, sinners, and then much worse, the tax collector. I like that. We still feel that way today, I think. IRS has always been a little worse than a sinner. So I'm just going to have to look at it that way, and I, I just hold that in my heart. But I like the way he puts that. He says, you know what? The gathered were the sinners and the tax collectors, but also were the Pharisees and the Sadducees, is that correct? And they were all gathered around and they're like, oh, look at him, he's, uh, he's cohorting with the sinners and the, the tax collectors as well. Just worse, it's bad. So as he does, he says they, they're sitting there and then that's where Jesus, you know, he humbles himself and he just, he preaches and he says, you know what? He says, what if one of you had 90 or 100 sheep and one of those sheep were lost? What would you do? You would gather your sheep. You would take them to an open field. You would take the 99 and put them in an open field so that they would be protected. And you would spend every waking moment and looking for that one lost sheep, would you not? And he says that you will look for that one lost sheep, that one sheep that is missing, that one sheep that is gone, that one sheep. My 99 will take care of themselves. I am missing that one sheep, that one. That one is precious to me. Even though I have hundreds, that one is precious to me. And I will go over mountains. I will go through the hills. I will go through the valleys. I will go through the brush. I will hunt that sheep down until I find it. And that's what he did, didn't he? And he says, you will go out. You will find that sheep. You will grab that sheep. You will put that sheep on your shoulders. You will carry that sheep back. You will say to your friends. You will say to all. You will say, look, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Does he not? And he holds that in, and he grabs him in, and he rejoices. And he says, come rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. This one is just as important to me as those 99. Amen. And then Jesus says, what? Come on. As a part of that parable, here's what we understand. He says, the angels in heaven rejoice louder for that one that comes to repentance, then the 99, and I like to picture Jesus doing this as he points to the Sadducees and Pharisees, then the 99 that don't need repentance. I like that. <laughs> because you know what? We all need repentance. And you know, that's where the Pharisees and the Sadducees were at right there. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to show them too, saying, um, I don't think you're that perfect. In fact, you're worse than the ones I'm sitting with right now because you think you're perfect. You think you got it figured out. You think you know what you're talking about. You want to withhold the truth of my word, the truth of God. You want to withhold it from those that really deserve it, these sinners, these tax collectors, those who do not even understand. You do not want to deliver it to them. You want to withhold it because you are greater. You are no greater. My lost sheep is greater than you. Because he seeks me, he loves me, and he needs me. That's what Jesus came for, didn't he? Uh -huh. Isn't that what he came for? 
He didn't come to talk to those who were already perfect in their own way. He came looking for people like me, imperfect sinners, people that want to be gathered, people that need to know the truth in their hearts, people that need that love, to understand that love in their spirit, to hold on because those are the ones who are truly going to grab onto Jesus and say, God, I love you. That's Amen. right. That's right. Holding on to that love. That's what Jesus came for. That's what Jesus was trying to show them. It's like, get off your high horse. Come down to your knees. And let's start over. That's it. Let's start over because you ain't got it. You ain't got it. You never will until you get to an altar and you bring yourself to me. Come, my sheep. Come, my children. But did they listen? No, they didn't. Why? Oh, I'll be darned if I'm going to step down from my happy high horse. Here, come down with you lowly people. I'm not going to do it. Because look at my robes. You know how much these cost? Goodness, and all that food that I have to buy. It's very expensive. I really need my salary as being a Sadducee. Right? Amen. Come on. Come on. Isn't that what their problem was? It wasn't that we're holier in spirit. They were holier in wallet. And they didn't want to let that go. All right? Why am I going to go talk to these sinners? They ain't got no money. What can you put in the plate? That's the way good. I see it. That's good. Come on. The tax collectors wanted to take their money. No, no, see, that's what I didn't understand. You know, the tax collectors have the money. Why didn't they go after them? Right. But they didn't. Right? And there's where I'm just, we see it, and we're seeing it more and more today. You know, Lisa, baby, I love you so much. I really do. I'm so, God that, so glad that God gave you and put you in my life, you know, because you know what? You just need to open up that spirit like you do, baby, because I just love you so much. And you know how iron sharpens iron? Well, iron is sharpening lead like no tomorrow. And she does a great job. I rely on her each and every day because that is a woman of God who loves God and just, just holds on to him every day. And that's what I'm thankful for, you know? Holding that spirit of Jesus in your heart. Walking with that spirit of Jesus in your heart. Walking with the spirit of Jesus. Let everybody who knows, they know, they see it coming. They're like, I don't know what's up with that guy, but he's coming right at me. He's going to say something that's going to make me uncomfortable. Oh yeah, that's me. I'm coming right at you, and I got some things to talk to you about. His name is Jesus. Okay? I love Jesus. There's power in that name, is there not? There's power in the name. Yell that with me. There's power in the name of Jesus. Is that right? Praise God for that. You know what I'm holding on? I, I, like I said, I think about that lost sheep. And I was, it just, one, I've read that a million times. And I love that set of verses. You know, and he goes on to talk about the, the parable of the lost coin. I mean, it all works together. He actually, there's a trifecta. He always does things in threes. So there's three parables that help you with that lost. And you know what I was thinking there? I got, I guess, I guess I got all wrapped up in myself again because I was like, all right, well, Jesus has put me on a grand commission. I got to go look for some lost sheep. I got to go dig it out. Oh, yeah, there's some lost people. I got to find them. That's me. I prayed about it. And here's what hit my spirit. What's lost in me? Okay. I, I don't. I don't. I don't care if you've been worshiping the Lord for a hundred years or for two days. There's a part of you that gets lost. It doesn't me. And a part of me that gets lost all the time. Sometimes I just get wrapped up in my job. Sometimes I get just wrapped up in my work. Sometimes I get wrapped up in just stupid stuff that I do. And every time I do that, I stray further and further away from God's flock. And he has to shuffle me back in ever so gently and bring me back. And that's where my heart's at today, church. I just... When I hold it in my spirit, I, I just think about that. I was like, you know, God, I, 
I'm tired of failing. I'm tired, Lord God, and I, I know it's in my nature, Lord God. I know I'm just human. I know I'm going to fail every day, but God, I just want to grow stronger and stronger in you. I just want to be with you, Lord God. I don't want to be lost in you, Lord God. I don't, I don't want to stray from you anymore. I just want to be with you. I want to hold on to you because you are my victory, Lord God. And every time I get a few feet away, that enemy's right there, right there to fight me, beat me down, try to take my victory. But I ain't, he ain't going to grab a single foothold on me. Now, we've heard from the pastors over and over again. We claim that victory, do we not? Do we step forward? And we don't back down. Maybe we can't take that step forward, but I am not moving back. I'm standing right here, and I'm going to stand solid. I'm going to grab my armor. I'm going to hold on to the word of truth, and I will stand and fight. Yeah. He's not going to get past God. Yeah. He's not going to get a hold of me. Yeah. He may knock me down. He may put me down. He may put me to my knees, but I am not backing up. And while I'm here, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to pray to him. He's going to lift me up, and he's going to take the upper hand. He will go before me, for he is the lamp under my feet. He is the light under my path. He will go victorious before me. Amen. Amen. Because I am not lost. I am God's sheep. And he rejoices when I come back to him. He rejoices when I stand firm, implanted right here in the word of God. Uh -huh. Just like you said, Brother Ken. We plant ourselves in the Word of God. Right. We hold on to the Word of God. Right. We grab on to the truth. We grab on to it. We write it on the tablets of our hearts. And we carry it as an adornment around my neck. Is that correct? I just love the Lord. You know, and he brought me to that truth. He's like, you know, okay, now you're looking inside yourself. Now you're seeing, Bill. You're seeing you get lost you get sidetracked but you come back right you come back you always say oh lord forgive me for just like brother ken said i am dumb and i always fail so hard lord god i'm just trying and i thank you lord god because in my weakness you are strong and I need that I need that strengthening that is all I have is God I will fail every day miserably he cannot he cannot fail so I'm going to put my trust in Jesus I'm going to put my trust in the Lord I'm going to hold his truth in my heart. And as I learned about that, I got to thinking. Another thing that was revealed to me, I just... And then I got to thinking about, oh, how Lord loves me. Oh, Lord God, I'm just thankful that you're so patient with me, that you're so understanding, that you understand the human side of me because you were here. You did it, and you did it perfectly. I thank you, Lord God, for understanding me. I thank you, Lord God, for always being with me. I thank you, Lord God, for just walking beside me. I thank you, Lord God, for carrying me most of the time. Because he does. He can, he's carried me most of my life. You know, have you seen that picture of the footprints in the sand? Mine has been a single set of footprints most of my life. My feet barely touched the sand, and when they did, I wasn't used to it. It's a little sensitive. I have real tender feet. <laughs> but you know, I'm thankful that you know he grabs on and he holds on. And so, I got to thinking about the love part when we were listening to that. And there's only one chapter in the Bible that really discusses love. I think it's considered the love chapter. Is that correct? I think it'd be First uh, Corinthians 13. Is that correct? And I think there's no better person that God could have used to write a love chapter than it would have been Paul. Yeah. All right? Yeah. 
And let's, let's break that down a little bit, shall we? Let's think about Paul. He was Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus. We've already discussed this one time when Jesus gave him a big slam dunk onto the ground. Remember that one? And he was like, hey, you, hey, Lord, Lord, please, that's enough for me. Puts the scales on his eyes. Remember, changes Saul's life forever. Saul, a man who will always tell you from the day he was saved to the day he was killed, he told you, I am the chief of all sinners. I am. I proclaim it. And he says, you know, there's no reason I should even be teaching the gospel. There's no way I should understand. I don't know anything about this. But what I do know is that the love that was shared to me, with me, by God, the way he saved me, grabbed me up, took me from what I was. I am a murderer. I have destroyed and killed your people, Lord, Lord. But you love me? How am I supposed to understand that? And then we start over from there. Then the Lord saves him. He loves him. He opens him up. He sends Ananias to him who to take the scales from his eyes. Then he works with the disciples. He goes forward, 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 and he starts working his way, and he starts understanding and wanting to preach the gospel. Is that correct? Amen. Now, here's where I get stuck a little bit. I have to put myself in Paul's place. Sure, he's been changed over. Yes, God can save. God does save. God does everything. It's really happening. But I'm telling you what, I don't know back then if I would have showed up, kind of like we have on the poster board up here. We've got Donnie Swagger coming. Could you imagine a church saying, we have Paul from Tarsus preaching next week. Cole should come. How do you think that would go over? I don't think they would have had a good turnout. And why should they? I mean, goodness. And you know, he had, he had opposition. He had opposition every time he showed up. They're like, Paul, Tarsus. Yeah, killer, how's it going? What's up, homie? Right? Yeah, I really don't want to, I don't even want to be close to this dude at all. But what did Paul say? Almost every letter, I love how eloquently he puts it. I just, I send you the love that I have in my heart that we might share the gospel together. And I know, you know that I love you with all my heart, he tells us. And he always opens his letters and closes them with the love of his heart. Because you know what? That's the only thing that carried out his ministry. And the only way that he could reach the human side of people who are sitting there going, I don't want to be close to this guy. And Paul says, I don't blame you. You have every reason not to want to be here. But I ask you to understand love. For God has shown me love. And I ask you to know love. All right, and in chapter 13, verse 4 of 1 Corinthians, says love is patient. Love is kind. Right? I, I lateral read. I, I can read it from the King James, but it confuses me a little bit. Because like it said, it says love is long-suffering. And I was like, I don't even want short-suffering. What? So, so I cut and paste it right there. Patient. I'm cool with that. I understand that. It doesn't take me off on a tangent. I don't need to go on. So <laughs> I read out of the NIV. I'm sorry. I apologize. But that's just what I do. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. That's it. it is not rude. That's it. And it is not self-seeking. It. it says, it says uh, love is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Yep. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth because it always protects. It always hopes. It always trusts. It always perseveres. Is that correct? Yes. Is that what it says? Now, the wife and I were having a wonderful time this week, as we always do, when we get into the Word, and I'll be just reading along and be happy and yada yada yada. Well, I happen to have that one, and she's like, she's like, oh no, you're not, you don't have that verse right. And I was like, oh, I do. And she's like, oh no, you don't. And I said, oh, I do, honey. See, I'm not stubborn. What do we call it? I'm extremely determined. It's a wonderful way to put it, I think. I love that. It's a very positive spin on it. But I am extremely determined person. And when I know I am right, I become very determined to prove so. 
oops, I'm one of those parts of love I need to work on. <laughs> but she's like, oh, no, that's not it. And I was like, well, it is. She's like, no, it's not. I was like, oh, it is. She's like, Bam. she grabbed the Bible. She grabs her King James Bible. Oh, it's wrong. I was like, grab the NIV Bible, because we have them all. We, I like to, I'd like to do a lateral read. It's OK. It's what I do. I'm, I said, grab the NIV. She's like, oh, that's, oh, yeah, love is patient, love is kind. She's like, how did you memorize that? I was like, oh, you know, we work with the youth. And I said, I don't know. There's a few of us here that were with the VBS last year. Were you with us? Remember Pastor Nancy by VBS? And, you know, when, what we teach those kids in song, in play, is the Word of God. So I'm going to do a little demonstration for you to help you memorize this verse, if you would like. Was that okay? Okay, this is from Vacation Bible School. I wish the children were in here because they love it. All right, here we go. I need you all to help me here. When I do the clapping, you need to go. Okay, can you do that? Yeah. All right, here we go. This is VBS. And by the way, I was the music guy and the entertainment guy for VBS, so I had a good time with it. Some say I was pretty good at it. So, so here we go. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always cares that there's it always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. <laughs> yes, I thought you'd get a big kick out of that, but that's see, that's what we're teaching these kids. All right. And I don't know about you guys, but be a kid at heart. There you go. All right? Because you know what? That's what Jesus said. He loves kids. So let's take it back there, shall we? I don't mind being a kid. I enjoy it. I missed it the first time. Okay? I grew up too fast. Had too much things going on. I didn't get a chance to be a kid. And so I love being a kid now. And Jesus is asking us that, isn't he? He's saying, grab onto that word. Grab onto it and hold onto it like a little kid would a toy. Be proud of that thing. Hold it. Grab it in there. It's the only thing in the world that we should covet is God's word. Shouldn't we? Is that okay? I think we should. And be that little kid. You know, and that's what that ministry is about. That's why I love working with the youth. That's why I love doing what I do. Because they're not learning anything. I am. They're teaching me everything I've ever wanted to know. And I love God for that because, you know what, he uses anybody. And he's asking for anybody to be used for his ministry. He's asking anybody to spread his word. He's asking anybody to step up. The harvest is ripe, but the workers are few. Is that correct? All right? No, he's not. He's asking you to do things at your own ability. You know? A lot of people, myself included, I'm not equipped for this. I don't, I don't know how to do that. I don't, I'm, not, I, I'm not the guy that knows all these cool, fancy words. I don't know that stuff. God's like, great. Moses had a stutter. How are you doing? There you go. I really, really need imperfect people. Because you know what? He's not calling the equipped. He's equipping the ones he calls. Are you going to rely on him to take care of the business? Are you going to rely on him to strengthen you? Are you going to rely on him? Because that's the ones he wants. He wants the ones saying, I can't do it. And he's like, no, you can't. But come along anyway. I'll help you. Isn't that what he wants? We're stepping out in faith. We're stepping out in trust. We're stepping out showing God, giving God back the love that he so easily gave us. He throws it at us all day long, forgiving us, thinking about us, being patient with us, loving us, holding us, carrying us. And he's just like, I only ask you to just talk to me. Sit down, remember me. Praise me in the good times. Praise me in the bad times. Talk to me, ask me. 
Anything you ask for in prayer and you believe, it's done. You know that scripture where he talks about you can move, your faith can move a mountain. If you have the faith and you want to get a mountain moved to the seas, believe it. Pray for it. It will be done. I haven't found a mountain I want to throw in the seas yet, so I'm not going to really test that part of my face because I like to hunt on mountains. I like to fish in creeks. But he says that it can be done. And let's start small. We've all got unsaved loved ones, don't we? All right? We pray for them every week. We pray for those who need healing. We pray for those that need to be revived. And I don't think there's a person in here that doesn't need to be revived in their faith. Is that correct? Do we all need to be lifted up? Do we not have something? We need to be just strengthened, set on fire, get our feet up dancing. Do we have that? Do we? Come on, give me a hallelujah. Yeah, lay it out. That's the highest praise you can give God. Hallelujah. Come on. And we just need that. We need a revival. We need to revive our hearts. We start now. We want to get on fire. Yes. All right? Because he does not want a lukewarm Christian. What does he do to a lukewarm Christian? What does God say? I will spay you, you from my mouth, for you are nasty. I'm sorry. I didn't write it. Don't kill the messenger. But he says, I will spew you like a bad piece of gum I had yesterday while playing bowling. You, oh, I didn't want that anyway. It's all good. Hope nobody trips on that. I better pick it up. But that's what he's asking, right? Because lukewarm, what does he mean by that? All right? Now, it doesn't mean we all have to go out and jog a marathon for Christ or jump rope for three days to do a record for Christ or anything like that. That's not what he's asking us to do. He's asking us to sink deep inside our hearts, grab onto our spirit, and lift it up to him and just put it on fire again. Start all over if you have to. The pastor's been telling us for weeks. He says, you know what? Get from the front. Go to the back and start your way back up again. It's not a bad thing to do. Starting over isn't a failure. Starting over is good. Starting over is refreshing. Starting over is what your spirit needs. All right? We got to grab onto that. Fill that spirit with a renewed strength of the Lord inside of you. And start it with love for Him. Because He says, you can talk with the voices of man and angels. But if you don't have love, it is the clinging of a cymbal and the banging of a gong. Yuck! Glorious God. Oh, hallelujah, glorious God. Praise Him. Praise you jerk, Him. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Isn't that what God's asking us? We don't go through the repetition anymore. We don't go through the traditions. We don't go through these things anymore. He's not asking that. He took that away from, from, from the people of Israel a long time ago. He says, I'm sick of your sacrifices. It's not because you weren't good at it. They had it down real well, perfectly. He's like, you have no spirit in it. There's no love. There's no nothing. This is nothing to me. Thank you for cutting an animal in half and burning it. Good job. Where's the love in your heart? Any heathen can do that. I've done it. Well, well, yeah, I had a barbecue. I did burn it. So. But isn't it true? Isn't that why he stopped it? Isn't it? He says, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. Because here they are. Right? Hey, what, they're just going through the motions, and that's not what God is asking us to do. We're not going through the motions, all right? Right? right and, 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 and if we're just going through the motions, then you know what? 
If that's what it is, then don't ask or expect a victory in anything. Okay? Because I'm not going to go through the motions. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, well, God will take it. It's, I give it up to God and it's going to be okay. No. I got to put a little work into it. You know what? I got to get myself a little workout. Would you like to see what my workout is? I was explaining this to a, to a person that's really into keeping their body fit. And I was like, dude, I got this great workout. Your body, mind, everything is just going to be so clear and so perfect. It's the most unbelievable exercise you'll ever do in your life. We do it at my church. We invent. It, it just goes on there every week. You're going to love it. Here's how it goes. It's been a while. I gotta, I, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put the back in, church. There you go. Just make sure that you keep your knees up, keep your chest out, because you gotta get that exercise. <laughs> Come to an altar and ask God to cleanse you. There you go. Buddy. Here's your workout that you need, church. Right here. Empty that heart. Empty your spirit. Empty your mind. Yes. Empty everything that you think you have that is good. Give it to God. Empty it out. Clear yes. that vessel. Empty that cup. So He can fill it with everything that is righteous, everything that is true, and everything that is whole. Everything the body needs. Amen. It's better than milk. It does the body good. Amen. All right? And that's what we got to hold on to. Amen. You know, if I was to title this sermon, I guess... I guess I would call it have a chip. Have a chip. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> because is that a drop? Think about drop it. Or? <laughs> right. Just think about it. You know what? I love the way the Holy Ghost fills my heart. I love the way the Holy Ghost fills His church. I love the feeling of the Holy Ghost when I'm walking with Him. I love the feeling of the Spirit of God when I know that I am connected with Him. I love that. I want it more and more and more and more. I want more, I want more, I want more. It's like a lace potato chip. You just can't have one. I want the whole bag. Amen. Come on. He wants it. The full gospel. There you go, brother. Amen. High five. The full gospel. Hold on to it. Embrace it. And you know what? When we start doing that together in a conglomeration, we come as a corporate prayer group. We come as what God has asked, the house of prayer. We come together, one mind, one accord. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. Enemy, he cannot come in here. No. Ha ha. He cannot cross the bloodline. Where'd you get that? <laughs> Come on. He can't. And that's what he's asking us to do, church. Let's get together. Let's get a fire together. We've got things coming together in the future. We've got things coming together. All right? And I need everybody to join me in prayer because we need a revival, church. We need, we need a refreshment. We need empowerment from the Spirit of God. Yeah. We need to be lifted up, all of us together, not just one at a time, all of us together as a full gospel fellowship. Amen. Let's be lifted up in the Spirit of God. Let's pray for revival and let's believe it. Yes. Let's grab it Amen. and take it one step further, church. Because there are sinners out there that need each and every one of our prayers. They need each and every one of us to come together. They need those that can go out into the field, deliver that message to them. Those who pray, pray. Each part of the body is an important part of the body. Yes, amen. Okay? Amen. So get on your knees. Ask God where He wants you. Yes, amen. Okay? That's it. Knowing your place. Come on. Jesus. We can do it. God's commissioned us to do it. He said it over. The New Testament. It's like a broken record, church. Go out. Spread the word. Probably says that at least 300 times in probably the first two books of the Gospels. Let alone go on. Go out. Feed my sheep. Will you? 
deliver my message. Tell him about my son. Come on, church. Over and over and over, we've heard this. He's just asking us to do a simple thing. All right? Now, I love the praise and worship to God. I love praise and worship in Him. I love that. You know, but the pastor says it over and over again. We know this. You know what? Isn't our tithe a part of worship as well? Amen. Am I correct? Yep. Another form of us worshiping? Worshiping is for God. This that I'm doing right now is for you. Worship is the only part that we do every Sunday that is for God. That's right. He loves it. And our tithe is part of that worship, is it not? Yes, come on. All right. Come on. Now, what about tithe? Do you think it is? Is it, oh, I pay my 10%. I do that faithfully. Yes, I do. And that is wonderful because you know what? That's why you take care of the church. But there's more to a tithe than just our financial aid that God has already given you anyway. It's His. At least you can do it in 10% back. But isn't He asking you for 10% of your time? 10% of your love and commitment? That's also a part of our time. Greatest worship we can give Him. Just a little bit of our time. Go find a stranger. Walk up to them. Say, Jesus loves you. That simple. If they walk by you and say, get away from me, freak. It doesn't matter. <laughs> or you might get the ones like I get going. That's a hairy dude. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he can shave or something. I don't know. And every once in a while, you'll get one of those that just go, Wow. And sometimes that's exactly it. Maybe you can move in and talk with her. Maybe you can share that little special word. Maybe you can tell about the good news. I like to. Because it took that one special person to share that good news with me. Amen. That changed my life forever. Amen. You found me in the deepest, darkest place any person could ever be. One little message that changed my life forever. It's never been dark again. My life shine brighter than I've ever seen. And everybody needs that message. Everybody needs to hear the word. Everybody needs to know that Jesus loves them. Jesus cares about them. And Jesus is waiting on them. Right. So in closing, I'd just like to add this. Church, when I listen to what we had to say today, I hear it in everybody's heart. I can feel it in everybody's spirit. We have the hunger for lost. We have a hunger to feel love, something I had no idea about in my life until Jesus came into my heart. We hold on to that. Let's remember that. Let's find that little lost part in us. Let's find it and give it to God. So He can carry it and rejoice. Let's find that lost part. Let's get healed. Let's get it in our cup. Let God fill it. And let's deliver that thing. Yes. I love each and every one of you, and I'm going to let the pastor finish it. <clears throat> All right, in prayer I ask this. Heavenly Father, Lord, I am just so thankful today that your loving kindness has always endured and it will always be with us forever, Lord. And I pray to you, Lord God, that each heart, each soul is cleansed today, Lord God, that they open up the Word of God and everything be new, everything be fresh, everything be exciting. Lord, light the fire in this church. Lord, just light your Holy Ghost fire. Fills every spirit here today. And just fill it with your goodness, your grace, Lord God. I pray that each, every heart that is here today gets touched. Lord, and I asked that if there is anyone who 
who just needs that renewal in their heart. Anyone that needs refreshment. Anyone that needs a fresh start. Let them come to you today, Lord God. Let them come to you. These altars are always open, folks. Jesus is calling you. He wants you to just give yourself to him. And give him your all. Pray, Jesus, that all that you do, Lord God, all that we do, Lord, let us just give it to you for our prayers, our hearts, everything we do, Lord God. I ask that it exalts you, it glorifies you. And I ask you to just be with us all week, Lord, and light that candle, Lord. Guide our paths, go before us and give us that boldness of your spirit so that we can share the good news with others, Lord God. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, church, when you look around in the church today, there are people here, but there's some who aren't here. They would want to be here. When I look out and I don't see Sister Velma, my heart just cries out, Lord, is she okay? Naturally, I have a uh, 